Ooh, what is up guys, of course, welcome to our week 4 in Mount Moon Battle Association. This time we're going up against Chicago Yurtering for Greg. And his team is so far undefeated, and for the right reasons, his team is extremely annoying to prep for. And uh, yeah, I mean, I've been out of town, which means I haven't really been able to set my mindset what I wanted to create for this specific game. Now, I did come up with a game plan. Knowing that I had Heatron and Gotchump, I needed to have Elodios and a Sumeril for this game because those two can spam things and I need things to wall them properly. Plus, Jardos isn't helping. Jardos very, very powerful Yuyumon and it can definitely take on my team really, really, really nicely. Uh, now, I'm bringing a Tauros with Ice Beam and Thunderbolt, of course, Life Orb, but now has Simba Headbutt and Earthquake. Basically, Tauros, in theory, can actually one shot his whole team. Uh, with the right amount of setup, of course. After that, I have Tengro, which basically Assault Vest can take as a, a Lava Plume from uh, a regular Heater, not a Specs one, and or Fire Blast, I mean. And basically, it's there to um, retaliate kills. Um, it walls Garchomp to some extent, but it, its main focus is to bait things. Uh, Mega Metagross, um, Bullet Punch, basically there because it has two mods against Sucker Punch. Having Bullet Punch makes sense uh, in that regard. Because that means I can out-prioritize him. Plus, I have Thunder Bunch, which actually kills Yardos uh, after an Intimidate. So, um, that's good to know. And I have Ice Punch in case his uh, Garchomp is not uh, um, sc Scarf for some reasons. And outside of that, I have, do believe I have Earthquake for Heatran. Because Heatran is annoying. So, Earthquake kind of makes sense. Uh, so, yeah. Bullet Punch or Meteor Mash. It's, it's the best thing, really. Then we have Sumeril. It's a dedicated switch in for actually his Garchomp, but I'm not gonna use it really like that. But the Choice Bandit uh, set is what I'm going with. Basically, his Scolipede is a sweeper variant that can take it on, and it's defensive enough to take on a Dragon Dance Yardos to some extent. The only one that really scare me here, uh, with that in mind, is gonna be Bohetra and Zorark, who potentially can hurt it really, really badly. Uh, Jealous and Tear, Cold War Berry, same set as previous week, really. Uh, can take on Jellicent and Jardos to some extent if it is Crunch. And basically it's here to kind of ensure that Hitmonlee can't spam close combat in my team. Um, then we have Latios with Kessib Bear, I do believe. The berry that reduces at least the bug, da bug damage. Basically, Scolipede is a Sweeper's variant. I am now defensive enough to take a Megahorn and reach out with a Psyshock. Now, I don't have Defog on this Latios, and it's because I didn't think I would need it. Uh, because the only thing I'm kind of... I was seeing him setting up was Stealth Rock, and I'm not necessarily weak to Stealth Rock with this team, so it made no sense for me of actually bringing that. Would have been differently if I had something that was floating, which I only think that uh, floating is, of course, Latios. And uh, I was debating having a Scarf variant, but due to Heatran, I can't have that. And I have Earthquake, Psyshock, Dragon Pulse. Was debating Thunderbolt, but Psyshock was the overall smarter choice to make sure to want to KO the Scolipede in the retaliation. So, really, with all this money, guys, let's go! So, Taurus is my dedicated, like, lead Pokemon. No matter what it brings, I'm going to be able to take on whatever he thoughts of bringing. Now, he's gonna bring Death Burn, and I was thinking, alright. It is Spike Set. Damn it. And I basically need to kind of hurt this thing and kill it. It's gonna get two layer Spikes easily. I'm gonna force it down to, to the Sash, it's not really I can do. Uh, I'm going to go for Earthquake here, hoping it doesn't go for a bad pass to Heatran. That's really all I got here. Uh, I felt that Heatran could potentially take me on, so... No, having that in mind, I knew that Urku was the smarter choice. Uh, he goes for second layer of Spikes, that's fine. And yeah, Sculpey is out of the way, which is a major threat actually for my team out of the way. I'm kind of glad it wasn't a sweeping, but at the same time, it kind of threw me off. So he's going to go to Velocity, knowing that he possibly couldn't go for a close combat. I'm going to go for Sin Headbutt, and I miss it. And that really sucks because that a 50% hit after Intimidate. Now he has obviously to go, must go now for uh, close combat. So I'm gonna bring Jellicent, and uh, basically I can go freely for Jellicent. And uh, seeing that Will O Wisp is a very, very obvious play, I'm gonna go for a Skull instead, hoping the Heatran isn't coming in. And he goes to Toxic. So I was like, you are playing a very, very, very risky game, sir. And I go for a Skull, of course, I don't get to burn because why would I? Uh, so this time I'm actually going to go for Willow Wisp, I was thinking, fuck it, you know, I, I, I can deal with Heatran no matter what, if he comes in, I already got the Toxic that I was, certainly I wouldn't get, and he's going to bring in, of course, Garch, and I was thinking, thank lord, but it could also be his Zorark, so having that in mind, I'm going to go for a recover here, 
basically scouting the damage and what a possible outrage can do. I am full defensive, so I should be able to take um, Earthquake or Outrage, no matter what, really. Um, so he goes for Dark Pulse, showing me, of course, there is Sora Arc, but that's okay, because we went for Recover, right? Flinch. Freaking flinched. We're gonna get flinched here, and that sucks so bad, because due to the spikes, I can't switch in again. And I'm basically forced here to fart this mon, and that really, really, really stinks. I was not expecting to be flinched here. Obviously, you know, that's a part of the game, but god damn it, really? First in headbutt, then send this? Damn it. So, so anyway, seeing that his only move of actually attacking my Metagross would be with Sucker Punch, and he's burned, I know right now I can Mega Evolve freely, I can even bait him, go for a Dark Pulse, and then kill him with a Bullet Punch. Now, he'll decide to stay in. He doesn't go for a Sucker Punch, which is lucky for me, even though it wouldn't necessarily hurt all that much due to uh -huh, the burn. But at the same time, you know, it is what it is, and I am now, of course, um, getting my Mega Evolution freely, which means that, yes, I can deal with this. Now, here comes this one, Heatron, and I was thinking, alright, is it Scarlet or Shookaberry? Uh, so I'm gonna bring Safira here, of course, my Latios, or Latias. As it goes for Lava Plume, it doesn't do really a whole lot, so I was thinking, alright, it could be Scarfed, it makes sense. So I go for Dragon Balls and then we could switch out. No. <laughs> he goes for it, I'm like, alright, it's Shuka. It's Shuka Barry then. So I need to pop it because I can't really hurt it out of, in any other way, really. Uh, and of course, he's extremely defensive. I don't even break the 50% area here. And uh, he goes for Stealth Rocks, so that's alright. Um, no, a lot of residual damage on my side now. And I kind of kind of feeling that, you know, it's too bad that I don't have uh, Defog at this moment. So he's going to bring in Jardos. I'm thinking, all right, all right, fair enough, fair enough. As I went for Earthquake, of course. So I was feeling, all right, he's probably going to Dragon Dance. There's nothing I can do. But he's going to switch out, probably scouting if I had Thunderbolt or not, as I go for Dragon Pulse. Now, here's the thing. There's no reason for me, since the way I was playing, that he would um, play this in a different than bring another mod in Heatron. Heatron can't take on my Latias at this point, so I'm just going to go for Dragon Pulls yet again. And it does very little damage to this Jaros, or it did way less than I was expecting. So I decided to go for Psyshock, because I was thinking, right, it should be close of killing it. And yes, it is, as he goes for Dragon Dance. I was like, oh no. Oh no. At least, you know, bullet is he's in bullet punch range. But I'm gonna lose Latias here because I can't risk it. I simply can't risk it. Uh, I could have gone for the Assume Reel, but I don't want any damage on that since I don't know the set of the Guard Chomp yet. So luckily for me, I guess he's Life for, which means he's gonna fall here. But that was not a, a nice move to be in. Now, I'm gonna bring Taurus here, hoping he bleeds with Heatron again. He does. So I'm gonna go for some Headbutt there because he has to go for his hit on top here, basically. There is no way he could play the thing differently because he will lose Heatron if he does that. So Velocid is gonna come in and get Intimidate as a right. Like I said, Sinema is a 50% hit. If we can hit, we, we cannot, we miss a second time. I was thinking, this, this, is, this is gonna be the end of me. This Hitman top keeps on going. It, it's not even funny. It just keeps on, you know, forcing me out because I can't risk it. So I gotta bring Sarlex here. Another thing is here, close combat doesn't necessarily hurt us all that much. But yeah, it sucks I have to use in this fashion. Now, obviously here, his defense is going to go down. I was predicting he's going to go for Toxic. There is no way he's going to bring Heatron here. He's going to go for Toxic. So I at least go for Giga Drain. So I get a lot of... Since he loses his defenses, I'm going to get a lot of HP back. And hopefully after that, I can go for an Earthquake. Because it seems like Heatron is the best switch in here. Um, if he goes for another close combat and I go for Giga Drain, he's going to lose his hit on top. Because he loses so much defenses. So it makes no sense for him of doing anything else. So Earthquake is what I'm going for. Now, mind you, had he stayed in go for close combat, that's why I went for Earthquake, that wouldn't have killed. But luckily for me, he goes to the Heatron. And Heatron is definitely out. Like, there is nothing he can do here. And we're gonna knock it out. The ba bim bada boom. <laughs> so, anyway, here he only has uh, Hitmon top left and Garchomp. And Garchomp is definitely feeling more and more menacing as we goes on. So, here was my thought process for this matchup. Now, here's the thing. Fire Blast does not take us out due to Weeping Assault Fist. Uh, if he's Scarfed, uh, then obviously Outrage will take us out. Dragon Claw will not take us out. Earthquake will not take us out. Poison Jab will not take us out. So I had no reason here to switch out. Uh, I'm just going to go for Hidden Power Eyes, knowing I can actually force it down a little bit. But that's the only play I have here. I am kind of safe. Now, granted, Heavy Outrage, he will kill me, but he's locked into Outrage and I still have a Sumeril. So 
it, it would be safe here to stay in, right? That's the only course of action I have right now. So I, I'm, I'm feeling that I am in the right pair. So he's gonna go for Poison Jab, which is alright. We do take it. And I know you know, when I cut like that, like, oh no, he's gonna get a critted. No, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. And in the eyes does it way less than I was expecting it to. Then again, there was no way I was gonna kill it outside of being fully offensive. But then I wouldn't be able to take that hit. So anyway, I'm just gonna go to use the palm. Sadly, I am forced here to go for an opa jet. You know, had he played the risky game here and not switching the hit points up, he actually would have lost it. But I couldn't risk it. I simply couldn't risk it. So he's gonna go to Villa City. He's gonna go to Intimidate. And my Aqua Jet does way less than I thought it would. Like, sure, it's up there, definitely, but I am in the wrong here. I have no granted switch in here, so I simply have to go to Tauros, or my Taurizion, and um, I was really hoping we would go with close combat here, because that would have meant Bullet Punch would be close of taking it out. Sadly, it goes with Toxic, and I say sadly because I would much, much rather seeing him not getting the extra leftovers damage or health back and yeah he's just gonna sucker punch which i was expecting was either that or knockoff but sucker punch is granted the better choice and since i know I now know he has sucker punch i can just go for bullet punch with my mega um mega mega you can say it right because i would prioritize him which is something i was expecting him to be bringing so sucker punch will be completely nullified but like i said here due to prior left towards damage he is now able to take another bullet punch and you might be wondering, how much is he able to take the bullet punch? I'd say barely, barely enough to take the bullet punch. It's gonna get a close combat on me. Luckily for me, it doesn't kill me, but he does get a crit here, which luckily isn't mattering. Had it killed it, it would, might actually have been way, 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 way worse. But yeah, we are actually able to kill the Hitman top. But the last one, of course, is the... Now I get a crit, that is nice, I can't miss that. So the last matchup is, of course, the Land Shark, which is the Guard Chomp. And bullet punch is not enough to kill. But we now know it's obviously scarfed, so we can just go for Bullet Punch, get the last residual damage, and it's pretty darn close of killing him, actually. But Sally is not enough, but I have used the poem with, of course, Aqua Jets, and there is no reason for me doing anything else than just wrap up this game. So we barely win this game 1-0, uh, but I will say this. I think I am extremely, extremely unlucky here when it comes to missing two Sun Headbutts, uh, getting a few, uh, one or two crits against me, and of course the clinch. But then again, you know, that's the game we play, like, I can't really blame my opponent on that. If anything, I think, actually, Greg here plays extremely well, and he's so close of defeating me, and he brings a team that I was not necessarily expecting, and I think that really, really makes this game pretty darn cool. So, Greg, if anything, good job. So, yeah, as always, let's leave, you know, some afterthoughts, you know, after this game. And, like I said here, I am a bit unlucky, and for what it's worth, it, it may or may not have mattered. I mean, had I landed first and headbutt, uh, I might have played the game differently, but it wouldn't mean that I would have won the game. It's, an, it's not what I'm trying to say. But the game will definitely take a much, much tougher turn for him, at least in the first scheme of things. And you know, the flinch there really sucked with Jelly Scent, but it forced me to play much, much more aggressively. So at the same time, he might actually have helped me. And uh, then we have, of course, his lead with Scallipede. I mean, what else can I say? That is just the best kind of lead. I did not expect that. I definitely expecting Scully P to be an offensive mom with life for this game. And uh, he knocks it out of the park. I think he plays that mod completely right. And I got nothing. Like, he gets the spikes up since I don't have a defogger. I didn't see the one coming. And uh, he does that so well. So, Greg, if anything, he's gonna have major props for that. And Scarf Guard Jump makes sense for this game. I knew it was gonna be a real threat for me. Um, I am a bit lucky, I guess you'd say, that I actually, uh, that I didn't have, or didn't go for, it was like a bandit version of the guard jump, I mean, it didn't would ban would be a bandit guard jump, then obviously, um, Metagross would have speeded it, but still, you know, that would have definitely knocked out, uh, <laughs> the tank growth. But that's the thing, like, I am forced to in and out, and I miss his head but twice, and it comes down to an 1-0, and I'm pretty sure this game would could have turned in anyone's favor. Luckily, I came out on top, but it's not like, its not that far away from me of losing, and uh, Greg should have all the credit he possibly could get, because I think he plays the game right. Um, I mean, what else can I say other than that? Yeah, he probably could have played the Gyros a bit more differently, but at the same time, he couldn't have risked a Thunderbolt from Latias if I had it, so I think he plays it right. I think he, he baits my moveset, and I think he does it just right. 
So for what it's worth, Greg, I think you did everything you could exactly the way you should have done it. And uh, yeah, you almost win the game. And I think if you had won, it would have been how fair. Or it would have been fair. Uh, I, I wouldn't have been salty about a loss here because you played the game really well. So good job on you, buddy. And we are now in a 4-0 stash, which is kind of cool. I've never been in a league where I haven't lost. But so I, so far, I, I don't. I only, I only had one comfortable game. And I do believe... No, actually, I have I have two 2-0s two and two 1-0s. So it's very close games. Um, I'm very lucky to be on top here, to be honest. Um, but anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and this battle. And uh, to Greg, thank you so much for this specific battle. I thought it was really good. And uh, yeah, don't forget to leave a like, stuff like that. And, you know, sub and if you, uh, you, know, you know the usual stuff, right? <laughs> anyway, guys, take care. Bye.